If you've been following astronomy long enough, you might remember all of the excitement in the media with the announcement of a potential Planet 9 somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system. A hypothetical ninth planet that could be anywhere between Earth and Neptune in mass and might be responsible for a lot of effects we're observing in the solar system. For example, the unusual orbits of a lot of trans-Neptunian objects or even orbital inclination of planets like Mars and Earth that might be explained if there was some kind of a mass of objects on the outskirts of the solar system pulling on everything for billions of years. Now, we've actually discussed all of these propositions and all of these explanations in one of the videos in the description, but in this video, we're going to discuss a relatively recent paper, a paper by Patrick Likauka and Takashi Ito, Is There an Earth-like Planet in a Distant Kuiper Belt? And it's a paper by two scientists who actually were kind of overshadowed by all of the announcements in 2016. And so in this video, I wanted to give them a bit of a credit for what they actually discovered originally, but also talk a little bit more about what they're proposing now and why it might be kind of exciting. So, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss Planet 9 once again, but this time with a bit of a twist. The twist being that it might not be an ice giant after all, but could actually be a terrestrial planet, maybe even very similar in mass to Earth. And though obviously not Earth-like in terms of climate, it could still have some features that would be really exciting if it really exists. But I guess let's also start with a bit of a clarification and a bit of a reality check when it comes to Planet 9. So this object became basically a viral sensation back in 2016 when a couple of Caltech scientists announced their analysis suggesting that there might be a planet on the outskirts that could explain everything. All of the unusual observations from the solar system. But even though this was like seven to eight years ago, after years and years of search, still nothing has been found so far. And we actually have several major searches by some of the most powerful telescopes, including the Atacama Cosmology Telescope, that was sensitive enough to detect objects really far away and conducted a very thorough search for at least six years. It scanned approximately 87% of the night skies focusing on distances of between 300 to 2,000 astronomical units. And at least in theory, it should have been able to locate anything that has a mass of about 5 Earth masses, or of course higher. But nothing so far has been discovered, which was eventually confirmed by other telescopes as well. Now, they did actually pick up 10 potential candidates for future studies, but it's quite unlikely that there were Planet 9, and more likely to be very distant TNOs or trans-Neptunian objects, kind of similar to what Pluto is. Nevertheless, because this would be a small planet, and most likely extremely cold, it's unlikely to produce enough radiation to be easily visible even by modern telescopes. At least if it's of certain mass. Although if this was a gas giant or some kind of a super-Earth, it should be producing some kind of a heat from the inside, and so technically should be visible at least to some extent. Nothing was found, suggesting that maybe it just wasn't there. Although here I have to also mention that there are quite a lot of alternative explanations to all of these observations that do not require Planet 9 to explain everything we're seeing. We actually discussed one of these major papers that kind of explains this as a statistical anomaly or maybe even just a coincidence. And that paper made quite a lot of sense as well. You can find this in the description. Alternative explanations involved gravitational pool from the entire disk of the solar system, as opposed to individual objects like Planet 9. Or it could also be explained by complex orbital mechanisms like the Kozai mechanism, something that to some extent we understand pretty well, but something that we don't understand when it comes to extremely large amount of bodies. You can find the video about this in the description as well. The point is that you didn't really have to have a planet to explain some of these orbital anomalies and to try to explain what we're seeing in the entire solar system. Maybe this was just statistics, nothing else. But this didn't stop some scientists and some researchers from trying to figure this out and from maybe discovering something. But the excitement from the original announcement by the scientists from Caltech has more or less disappeared. I mean, I don't think they gave up on finding this, but there's definitely a lot less buzz about this. And the thing is, it's a little bit unfair that they got all the credit when, in reality, this particular proposition was originally made by someone else and technically, the scientists behind this recent paper. In other words, Planet 9 was originally proposed by someone entirely different. It was proposed by Patrick Likauka and Tadashi Mukai back in 2008, 
and they were actually the first to notice these unusual observations and these unusual patterns, implying that a large planetary object was probably the reason for unusual observations when it comes to TNOs or trans-Neptunian objects. And they never gave up on trying to discover this planet, because even now, essentially 15 years later, they made a new proposition with even more evidence. Or basically came up with an alternative explanation. Maybe this planet is not as big as we initially thought, and is actually much closer to Earth in size and in mass. A dark frozen world, possibly no more than three masses of Earth, and possibly no farther than 500 astronomical units away from the Sun. This would be much closer than the original proposition, and would also involve a much smaller planet. And one of the main reasons they actually make this prediction is once again because of new discoveries of even more TNOs with somewhat peculiar orbits forming unusual patterns such as for example what's known as clustering. Or essentially some of them seem to move together in larger groups with very similar inclination, very similar eccentricity and overall similar orbits. As if there was something really massive on the outskirts pulling on them and stretching their orbits in the same way. And because we have a lot more data now, and quite a few more of these TNOs have been discovered in the last 10 years, this hypothetical planet would still be the best explanation for first of all why we see this clustering, second of all why we see so many inclined orbits not aligned with the disk of the solar system, and why we also have very extreme objects like Sedna that possess very unusual orbits extremely different from most of the objects in the solar system. Something must have influenced this object to make it orbit in this way. Because of its unusually eccentric orbit, Sedna right now does not have a very good explanation. It's too far away from Neptune to be directly influenced by its gravity. But because nothing so far has been discovered in terms of larger planets, the new proposition downscales the mass a little bit, making this most likely an Earth-like planet, anywhere from 1.5 to 3 masses of planet Earth, with an orbit that's about 250 to 500 astronomical units away from the Sun and the inclination of 30 degrees. So several times smaller than the original proposition by Caltech scientists and also much much closer. But maybe still far enough to not be that easily detectable by modern telescopes. Far far out is at the moment the farthest object we've ever discovered and this is 132 AU away. The hypothetical planet in this case would be at least double the distance. And obviously, with that type of an orbit, it would be moving extremely slow across the night skies, with an orbit taking possibly around 10,000 years. It would also be extremely cold, producing almost no light whatsoever, and depending on its surface features, might not even reflect light, basically staying invisible overall. Nevertheless, the new evidence provided in the paper, especially evidence using a lot of TNOs discovered in the last few years, still makes this a pretty strong case. In other words, at least in theory, the chance for having this planet is right now a little bit higher than not having it. And if the scientists in this paper are correct, we might have another Earth-like planet somewhere really 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 far away. And I bet if it's real, and if we actually find it, it's probably going to kickstart a new race to try to reach this world in order to actually find out what's happening here. So yeah, finding this would be really good for astronomy. But at least for now this is all still very hypothetical and nothing larger and more massive has been discovered in approximately 90% of the night skies. And so if this planet is real, it's smaller and closer to us. And if it's not real, then the orbital dynamics of the solar system and a lot of other star systems might actually behave in a way that we still don't understand very well. Either way though, these are exciting studies. They're most likely going to lead to some groundbreaking discoveries. But exactly what those discoveries are, at the moment nobody knows. Although interestingly enough, just a couple of years ago, there was actually a discovery of an unusual exoplanet in a different star system that sort of meets all the criteria for Planet 9 in the solar system. Similar eccentricity, very similar orbit, and even similar properties. The video in the description talks more about this because this was actually really exciting. It means that these planets are definitely possible, we just don't really know if they exist here. But if we do discover something in the next few years, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out some of the other videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.